I have fallen down a deep and winding culinary rabbit hole, landed on a fluffy marshmallow, and shouted, S'more, please! But I'll take that s'more meatless, because today we are talking about the graham cracker attributed to Sylvester Graham, the father of vegetarianism in the United States. I did wonder what the meat option is with a s'more, and now I'm thinking bacon, and I think it <laughs> could be good. Honestly, bacon on a s'more probably would be good. Just not American chocolate. Welcome to Remember, Remember, the show about history, mystery, and did you know that some people say that cornflakes were invented as part of an anti-masturbatory diet? I have heard that. You have that. heard that. Uh, according yeah. to my research, though, it is not true. Though they were invented by John Harvey Kellogg, who was one of those people who thought masturbating could make you go blind. Or just kill you. I am vision impaired, so... <laughs> Me, on the other hand, 2020 vision. Read from that what you will. But you can't hear anything, which is interesting. Oh, you are deaf in true, one true, ear. True. So, who knows what you've been getting up to? Who knows? <laughs> Kellogg got a lot of his ideas from the aforementioned... Sylvester Graham, come with me on a wild, winding journey that started with me pondering the company Nabisco. But first, my name is Paula, and my favorite childhood store-bought baked good was Teddy Graham's, which I haven't eaten in like at least 15 years. And this is my co-host, Matthew. Matthew, what was your favorite childhood store-bought baked good? store-bought baked good yeah like cookie or you know a store-bought like not a baked good that your mom made but something that came from the grocery store this, this is gonna have some real issues with cultural differences i feel like you didn't have like a donut i guess custard filled donut but we don't have, you don't like, have like those boxes of cookie you don't have like chips ahoy yeah well that's, i guess that's a baked good ginger snaps then ginger biscuits i like those okay because mine were teddy grams you don't know what teddy grams are no idea what they are they're little Actually, graham cracker type cookies. Are they bear shaped? In the shape of bears. Also, probably best to get this out of the way. You're going to be saying graham, and I want to say graham, but I know it's graham. You can so say I'm just going to use. In your accent. I just. A graham cracker sounds weird, so I'm just going to say graham cracker this whole time, but I feel dirty about it. You can say it in your accent. Like if you were talking to a person named Graham. You would probably say, like, Graham, right? I say Graham. Graham. Like That's it's funny. Spelled. It's so Southern. You've added a syllable to it. It's a very Southern way of saying it, American Southern way of saying it. Graham. I'd argue you've taken a syllable away. But... Well. <laughs> okay. But sort of back on topic, because back on topic is a Why bother? very loose thing in this particular episode, because it really is... I looked up one thing, which led to another thing, which led to another thing, and that is what this episode is. So the other day I was on the internet, like you do, thinking about the company Nabisco. Y'all have Nabisco. Do you have Nabisco? Nabisco. Nope. Ding. We've got Nesquik and Tesco. So I guess it meets in the middle. So Nabisco is the national biscuit company. And I was wondering why. Hold on a second. Hold on. A... Hold on. Hold on a second. Yeah. Biscuit company? Yeah. Yet they make what you would call cookies? Yes. I feel hypocrisy. Exactly. I was wondering, why is this American company called that? We don't call them biscuits. We call them cookies. Because you call biscuits biscuits, which I would call some type of savory scone. And they are fantastic. <laughs> A fluffy savory scone. Though your scones oh, so are good. often fluffier than the scones you get here, I find are very like crunchy. Yeah. Clagtastic. Anyway, maybe we'll cut that out, or maybe we won't. Okay, so why is Nabisco called the National Biscuit Company? Why? And also, from there, I thought, wait, why do we call them cookies and the British call them biscuits? Please tell me. I, I don't need the suspense. This actually came up recently in like a random YouTube video I was watching, and I was like, I know the answer! <laughs> I just looked this up! So according to one website on the internet, you know, where all websites live, and go to die. It all goes back to colonial New York, which was originally New Amsterdam. 
because it was first colonized by the Dutch in 1625. And the Dutch have a traditional treat called koekjes, which means little cake. Forgive my pronunciation. I'm doing my best. So a little cake is basically what a cookie is, right? No. It's like a little cake. Cookie treat. It's a little cookie. Fine. I'll allow it. I disagree, but yeah, fine. Okay, I guess you're right. So like a it's little a baked good. Baked. A little baked good, yeah, fine. So now the English takes over New Amsterdam in 1674, which is why we Huzzah! call it New York now. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they were like, Amsterdam, no. We now shall name this after the Duke of York or whatever, who knows? I don't know. New York. Or just York. Old I guess York. York. Yeah, I have old York. We've been to York. Yeah, we just called it York. We have been we to have York. We have old York and we have New York. We don't have old York. It is old we York, just ha- It is, but we just call it York. All right? I don't go to New England and think I'm from old England. Ye old England. Ye oldie England. It's a thorn. Right. You can just say the. But go on. So you know who else got a bit irate over this name change? Not unlike you just now. I didn't get irate. Mm. The former Dutch dwellers. I bet they did. They were like, what the (laughs) Janus? So slowly they had to begin transitioning into speaking English, right? God's language. So this takes time. And the word cookies morphed into cookie. And because New York became such an important city in America, its local word for these little cakes is what spread through the U.S. and changed biscuit to cookie. So why do we call some biscuits cookies here then? That's my big question. Because to me, cookies are a specific type of biscuit. So I have to assume that the chocolate chip cookie originated in America and was brought back over the Atlantic to us. And we went, oh, these are chocolate chip cookies. Because a biscuit can be a wide bath of things. Your ginger snaps to your, you know, chocolate chip cookies. When you, something you call a cookie, is it like a, is it have a snap or is it more of like a chewy? A cookie has chocolate chips in it. And that's it. A chocolate chip cookie. That, That's what we have. I don't know for sure because I didn't go down that rabbit hole during my research, but I feel like I would buy that. That came over The Americans from America. added chocolate to a treat and then repackaged it and sold it back across the pond. Yeah, I can buy yeah. that as well. Let's try not. Let's not argue. Let's, Let's not, not argue. argue. Let's not Let's argue. Let's not argue. I love biscuits. Do you know once I was full on biscuits, cookies? Full. <laughs> Couldn't eat another m- mouthful. Full. <laughs> I ate two sleeves of ginger snaps and thought, I don't need any dinner now. I thought, thought, I feel like I could die. Ginger snaps are the best. We call them, like, we call them, so you call them ginger snaps. We mm-hmm. call them ginger nuts, which is what we call Why them. Why are they nuts? Strange. They're called a ginger they're called snap ginger because nu- they snap. They're called ginger nuts because they're, because they are. Okay, that's why. <laughs> All right. One of the things that Nabisco makes is a biscuit slash cookie that we don't call a biscuit or a cookie we call it a cracker and that's the graham cracker which made me wonder why why do we call it a graham cracker it's a cookie biscuit it's closer to a ginger snap than a ritz and that's how i became aware of sylvester graham matthew presbyterian minister dietary reformer and man highly suspicious of pleasure he sounds like a laugh riot sounds like an absolute nightmare to try to be friends with honestly was he the kind of person who was against other people having fun because he was unable to have fun i'm gonna guess he was (laughs) well nobody should be having sex no one then everyone stop (laughs) if i can't do it no one will my wife hates me your wife should hate you too (laughs) sylvester had kind of a rough childhood he was born in 1794 and had 16 siblings, Matthew. Don't, don't make me feel bad for him. I want to make jokes. You can make jokes. He's been dead for so long. His parents got a lot of pleasure, <laughs> it sounds like. Apart from being pregnant for, what, like 14 years? <laughs> 13 yeah, yeah, years? Right. Well, Jeez. and they were, I mean, he was 
at the end of these 16 kids. His father was 72 when he was born and died when he was only two. And I mean, good on him for being that old and still getting it on, I guess. I mean, how did he die is what I want to know. <laughs> his mother wasn't the most stable person, so Sylvester went to live with his relatives and ended up working as a child in a tavern that one of them ran. So that early exposure to drinking and drunkenness caused him to hate alcohol, and he swore to never drink. Okay, that makes sense. Right. I'm getting some strong Les Mis vibes from this whole situation. Ooh, but yeah, that yeah, makes yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah. I can see him being... He's basically Cosette. I, the worst character in the whole thing. No. But the whole love story in Les Mis can I just do I know you don't do like one. it. I don't want the love story. I barely want anything other than people dying on a barricade and Jean Valjean fighting Javert. That's all I really care about. Anyway, I can understand because I, I know people in my own personal life, and you do as well, who had times where their exposure to alcohol was nothing yes. but negative and yeah. have staved off the alcohol themselves. Yeah. And I can totally understand that. My mm -hmm. mom's that way, frankly. Yeah. And it makes sense, right, that someone would... Say, you know what, I've seen the ill effects of this thing, so why would I ever be interested in partaking of it myself? Well, and I have my own thoughts on that, because in one way you could say, I've seen this being abused, so mm -hmm. I refuse to use it at all. Whereas some tools and pleasures in life, when abused, can be very detrimental. But of course, when they are used in moderation, everything in moderation, including moderation... <laughs> I think is a good thing, right? And so in some ways I feel, sorry is not the right word because I feel like people don't feel like they're missing out. But in some ways I feel like you're kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, yeah. with the cutting your nose off to spite your face. One of those idioms. Throwing the baby out with the bathwater was appropriate. But also yeah. this is a bit of a side tangent, but if you have a family history of like yeah, addiction, I, I can see being like, you know what? I'm not even going to mess with this thing that, it's likely that I would also have a predilection for addiction to... Ooh, put that in a rap song of some sort. I got a predilection for addiction. My addiction is so nice. I feel like that won't make the podcast because it made me cringe. I feel but... like it will because I thought it was pretty great and I want to show it off. I feel like the fact that you called it a rap song means you shouldn't be partaking <laughs> in the genre. Is it just a rap? You could have said, wow, those were some powerful bars. You know, I spit that fire sudden. on these bars. I fly my ship up to Mars. I drive a lot of red, red cars. And, and I'm out. Three rhymes is all I can do. That's not enough rhymes. I wanted another I one like... to end it out on, but... I watch a show I'm with sorry. a character named Lars. Boom, mic drop. Except it's on a I stand. liked that it rhymed, but what it made up for in rhymes, it lacked in any tangible sense. <laughs> Sylvester Graham always had poor health, and in his late 20s, after leaving seminary for some reason, uh, he had what is described as a nervous breakdown with no other details, so he needed to be nursed back to health. So that's, it sounds like a depressive episode, but that's just really my was guess. Very popular, I think. Like you said, I don't think he was a barrel of laughs to be around, and so I imagine, yeah, I don't think he had a good time. I already feel sorry for him, so I don't want to make any more jokes so. at his expense. I mean, I will, but I don't. I shouldn't, you know. <laughs> so I can appreciate that. He's had a rough upbringing, and he's been sent away from his family, and now he's, yeah, probably not the life of the party, right? And ill health. He's he's yeah poorly and then the cholera pandemic happened so that led me down a small side rabbit burrow to learn about that this was the second cholera outbreak and it wouldn't be until the third that dr john snow who apparently does know something would convince people that there was a connection between the disease outbreak and water contaminated with sewage and that led me to look up germ disease theory but honestly that's not really worth going into right now to me, Jon Snow was a news presenter in the late 90s and early 2000s. And a pub near Hampstead Heath. I have an actual friend in real life who's named Jon Snow. And let me tell you... I feel like it's actually way more common than you'd think. <laughs> he was not thrilled, I don't think, when uh, that line happened in Game of Thrones. If the line had been, 
you've got a massive cock, Jon Snow. <laughs> I imagine <laughs> he'd be like, people could repeat this to me in my day-to-day life and I'd be okay with it. So this is still the second cholera outbreak before we know there's a connection with germ. And people do not know that germs cause disease or that you shouldn't literally shit where you eat. A lot of it was like a miasmus, uh, anathema of kind of like walking into toxic air, uh, yeah, spontaneous. Exactly. Uh, yeah, the current theories for what is causing and spreading cholera include miasma, which is exactly what Matthew just said, bad or polluted air. Some believed it might be related to overcrowding, which honestly, it probably was in a sense. Well, this is empirical evidence based. It's not just nonsense. Yeah. It's, yeah. Whoa, miasma, where there's bad, kind of like bad air, like in a swamp, which is where everyone dies of malaria because that's where the mosquitoes are. And things like overcrowding, yeah, that is where things spread so much. You're going to pass germs around, yeah. Absolutely. So it's not, it's within the basis of what people know at the time, they're going, okay, this kind of makes sense. We've got to come up with something. And they were not far wrong i mean during plague times there would be pits like there'd be a stone cut out at the start and end of like a village Mm. so before you go into the village there'd be a stone and you can still see these in the uk and places like germany i imagine and everywhere i guess but it's a stone that's carved out and it's just enough space to put your hands in and they'd fill those with vinegar so that you can put your hands yeah so you put your hands in vinegar it was an early hand sanitizer station yeah, exactly. That's and so they weren't wrong. Vinegar can kill uh, bacteria yeah. and stuff, right? So I didn't know that. That's fascinating. It would have been better to have put vodka in them, right. but I imagine they went with vinegar because people wouldn't just keep on drinking it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why are all these vodka stations empty? <laughs> <laughs> Why is everyone just drunk all the time? <laughs> if anything, it's getting worse. <laughs> Everyone's sh- licking the same stone as they go into town. <laughs> Some people, though, did think it was a punishment from God. Yes. And in Britain, the queen received petitions, actually, to name a national day of fasting and prayer to be delivered from the disease. Did it work? Although I wouldn't turn down another national holiday if it was called Plague Day. We'd have an episode on it, honestly. I'd be like, why do we do this? Why do we wear plague doctor masks on this day? It's creepy. And set off fireworks for some reason. (laughs) Doctors of the time also linked cholera to diet and recommended people drink less alcohol and eat less meat, which very nicely brings us right on back to Sylvester like a pretty segue ribbon tied in a beautiful bow. But I will say drinking, again, this is in a way empirical evidence-based research and diagnosis because drinking less alcohol probably informs a lot of your other decisions in general. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you're drinking less alcohol, you're probably spending less time in the crowded tavern. Mm-hmm. And also, when you're not drunk, it does your body. I th- believe that your body is able to fight off things better. I, I would. I have to yeah, I think it. so. But maybe that's just hocus pocus. That I just still believe. And the jury's out on whether drink eating a lot of meat is good or eating a lot of meat's bad. I mean, some people only eat meat and they're thriving. I think it really is a person by person basis. Everybody, for some reason, is different, right? Even though you'd think we would all be more the same because we're all human bodies. Why are we all so different? Anyway, my body is just there's something. It's just just what's going on with it. It's doing some things. (laughs) It doesn't feel good ever. That's just getting older. Do some people feel good? I don't know. I don't. I feel awful all the time. I really, like, I'll go to my doctor and be like, everything hurts all the time. Is this a medical issue or is it just part of aging? I can't tell. I went to the doctor and just said, is everyone just always sad all the time? Is that what life is? And (laughs) he went, no, "No, you might be depressed. That's that's something else. I was like, oh. In that case, I've been sad since I was 13. (laughs) So at the same time people were being told to have more moderate diets as a protection against cholera, Sylvester was becoming a vegetarian. With health concerns and religious faith in mind, he began preaching a doctrine of living a godly life, not only for your soul health, but also for your bodily health. Sylvester taught that pleasure, especially of the sexual kind, harmed a person's health. He preached about staying calm, avoiding overexcitement, and not giving into worry or lust as a way to stave off illness. 
He prescribed hard beds, cold baths, drinking pure water, eating no meat, and no spices. Too much seasoning excitement could lead you down a dark path after all. Oh, yeah. All right, mate. You got any tarragon? <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, need some. I just really need some salt. I need some, I need some cardamom salt. pods. And they're like, oh, stat. bath salt? No, no, no. No, no, no. Just no, 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 no. seasoning salt. salt. <laughs> Well, the thing is, right, he's right and he's wrong, isn't he? That's a, such a frustrating yeah. part of this. Some of the things he's saying are really good and some of them are just not nonsensical. And he, I feel like you don't... It's like, oh, I'm feeling all these benefits. It's like, yeah, you're feeling the benefits from this thing, but you don't yeah. need to do this thing. Like, I... Because why would it be bad for you to do the most basic natural thing of reproduction? Why would that yeah. be bad for you? It doesn't make any sense at all. But on the other side... I mean, do I feel bad after it every single time? Yeah, of course I do. I feel <laughs> guilty. I'm like, what am I watching? Why am I... Oh. I guess this is what I like. I don't know. But... And the guilt from that is terrible. Well, but, but see, the flip side is that is don't feel that guilt. Let go of that worry. You'll be healthier and happier. And that is not wrong if you can let go of worry. Anxiety and stress are hugely bad for you. So he's not and wrong there. there. I get that. Components to, according to my doctors, stress can have a real physical toll on your health. Of course it does, because it releases cortisol into your yeah, body, which is terrible it. for you. You know, that's why I'm always listening to ASMR almost all the time, apart from when I record podcasts, because that would be distracting. I'd be like a Korean girl going in my ears. I don't need that. I mean, I, I like it and I'll be doing that straight away after this. I mean, I take cold showers because it's really good for you, but it's more of a psychologically it's good for you because it, it's hard and it gets something difficult done. So you, the rest of your challenges in the day aren't as... Well, sometimes too, there can be like a shock to it which can trigger your um your limbic system yeah and i feel like for me cold showers is good because it, it for me it helps reduce stress yeah. essentially or helps you deal with stress management like physical stress management the jury's out right on all this cold shower stuff i feel like dr huberman is it should i be doing it should i not be doing it i don't know i'm doing it i'm doing the wim Hof breathing as well and honestly, a after what? I've done the Wim Hof breathing, I feel like I forget how to breathe normally. What but is I'm doing that? It. Should I be doing it? Dr. Huberman, help me out. This is a reference to something I don't know, Matthew, I have to say. I'm in a very male-centric part of YouTube. <laughs> Let's just say that. Well, do any of these parts of YouTube tell you to not eat carbs? Because the mainstay of the Graham diet was bread. Love bread. And I do like that. But it had to be homemade. And made with flour that was coarsely ground at home to keep it natural and wholesome. He was such a freaking hippie. So bread was normally made from very finely ground flour that had been yeah. doctored to bleach it, keep it from spoiling, and hide the odors caused from when it did spoil. Plus, non-homemade bread was often made with brewer's yeast, which was also used to make beer. So you can see why Sylvester wanted people to be grinding their own flour and making their own bread at the home. devil's piss. Look, white bread's better than any other bread because it tastes better. And frankly, I disagree. it's just true. Also, the worst thing in the world is pumpernickel. Have you even eaten that? It's terrible. I don't like sourdough. Can I come out and say that to everyone? I never have. And people act like <laughs> sourdough is really fancy bread. Like it's like a fancy treat. While we're at it, And I'm like, up. no, I don't want sourdough. It's gross. It's sour. While we're at it, brioche is just fine. It's not like it's, it's that all right. great. Yeah, it's all right. What I want, if I'm being very honest, yeah. is a French baguette with real butter in it. <gasps> and I want to eat that whole thing mm. in private so no one can see my shame. That's what I want. <laughs> and that is how I would live. I can't be trusted around French bread, which is the best bread, let's be honest, and real butter. Because I'm just... I've got no, you you know it's me. Good. I have, have I struggle very little with self control. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but here's a fun fact uh, that I found after uh, is researching. Is it fun or is it awful? Uh, it's both. It's I feel both. like you're mixing these things up a lot. <laughs> it's both. Here's a fun fact during the play. <laughs> so, uh, Cracker Barrel is not just a restaurant meant to convince you to buy chachkis and eat biscuits and gravy, but I do love Cracker Barrel. <sighs> me too. I love it so much. <laughs> but it was an actual barrel, barrel, but an actual barrel full of soda crackers in a general store. 
That's how they used to sell them, and people would gather around these barrels to talk and gossip much like a modern-day corporate water cooler. But as you might expect, crackers, stored in an open barrel, might go stale and not be so great. Probably should just make them yourself at home from coarse flour. And they would get a little bug. They would go bad. And that is apparently what the restaurant is named after. Look, Cracker Barrel is so good, and I am getting biscuits and gravy. And it's great. And sausage gravy, and it's brilliant. And, like, they do chicken fried steak, I think. Something like that. I don't know. It's oh, great. Yeah. Everything I do is good. I love Cracker Barrel. It's great. Can we just go to Cracker Barrel and forget about... The world. Anything else in the world and our waistlines? If we stay here. If we stay right here. In this Cracker Barrel and just forget the world. Anyway, back to the sort of main through line here with the scare of the cholera pandemic. Sylvester Graham began to gain a following called Grahamites. People living by his teachings appeared to be doing better during the pandemic than others. And so Grahamism gained traction. How would you say that, Grahamism? Grahamism? I would call them grandma lambs because that's grandma more fun. Lambs. But These grandma lamb ding dongs yeah. gained traction. And they needed something to eat and not stale saltines out of a barrel. It doesn't sound great. No. Especially minus the salt. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. You can't, yeah. These are just teens. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) They're just eens. Stale eens. So the manufacture and sale of graham flour, graham bread, and graham crackers was born. Sylvester Graham didn't exactly invent these things, nor did he apparently ever profit off of them, but they were made for his kind of people. I not thought that because grand flour is something I, yeah, that's yeah. something I, I know that grand flour. That's it's something liter- that's in an American recipe. Yeah. I imagine it's a coarse flour. Then is that what grand flour is? Yes, grand flour is a coarse ground wheat flour that is not sifted after milling. Is it because sifting is too much like shimmying, which is too much like doing it? <laughs> it has to be, right? That's how I do it, by the yeah. way. It's all shifting wiggling is like on. the flower version of dancing and footloose. You know what I'm saying? So now let's come back full circle to Nabisco. Graham crackers were first mass produced by Nabisco in 1898. Though, of course, they weren't really exactly the same as what Sylvester Graham himself made. His Graham crackers had no sugar. For I was going to say, I know graham crackers for being sweet. They're yeah. like, in Britain, the closest thing we really have to a graham cracker in Britain is a digestive yes. biscuit, mm-hmm. which is funny because a digestive biscuit was also, I believe, developed mm. for health reasons in mind. That's why it's called a digestive bi- biscuit, you know? Yeah, and they are. If you've never had a digestive biscuit, it is, it's very much like, it's basically a graham cracker. They're um, very texturally different, but they are taste wise the same super texturally different they are different but i wouldn't say they're widely different in fact if you get the they're ones that have different. chocolate on one side i think they are be perfect for a s'more they're no different i really need to, i delineate between biscuits and cookies and all the different varieties i think more than you do but that's fine yeah because to me they're all cookies if someone said you want a biscuit i've got a nice biscuit and they give me a digestive i'm like but you just i was expecting it, a hop knob you just called it a digestive biscuit yeah, I know. It is a biscuit. But I'm just saying, if someone offered me a nice biscuit and they come out with a digestive, I'd be like, have you not got a hobnob? Hobnobs are also good. Hobnobs are great. White chocolate ones are back. Woof. God, I'm so sad I'm on a diet, Paula. I, I love <laughs> I love biscuits. I will say this. Biscuits and cookies are my number one biggest weakness. That is my go-to thing. Hmm. I love biscuits. Biscuits. Well, see, Sylvester Graham was right. Sugar is too much of a distracting pleasure. But graham crackers today come in honey or cinnamon sugar flavor and even yeah, good. Matthew chocolate. And of course, they are a key ingredient of s'mores, which is one of the most pleasurable, indulgent, and practical foods of all time. Sylvester, honestly, I think he would be horrified. And they're the base layer of most cheesecakes, I feel like. Yeah, that's the, that's, you make the crust out of the graham cracker and like butter and you, mm, yep. <laughs> yeah, and added sugar. Oh yeah, and then you caramelize that whole son of a gun. I think it's important. We're, we're getting distracted by. I'm so hungry for sugar. Right now. 
And so... Is it so wrong for me to want pleasure in my mouth, Paula? I don't know if it is. With that in mind, I'm going to end with a quote from Sylvester Graham to get us back on the straight and narrow, Matthew. It's from his published work, A Lecture to Young Men on Chastity, intended also for the serious consideration of parents and guardians. He who in any manner endeavors to excite the sensual appetites and arouse the unchaste passions of youth is one of the most heinous offenders against the welfare of mankind. I would argue, what business is it it of yours? And how does it hurt you? And I would, my rebuttal statement would be the popular shut up. And it's not hurting you, so leave me alone. Different strokes for different folks, you know, different sh- strokes. I get it, Paula. I got folks. it immediately. Yeah, I got it. So remember that, dear listener. Remember. Next time you eat a ground cracker, take solace in knowing that he would probably bug the person who made them. That is unfortunate. And I don't think he was a bad guy, right? He was really trying to promote healthy lifestyle. I mean, one of the things was like drink purified water yeah it's probably a good idea he had quite a bunch of good ideas i feel like but we only remember him for the ideas that were kind of silly by today's standards well, honestly, which is unfair really in the lens of history he would probably have a very popular youtube channel now right he'd all be yeah, like i'd be subscribed my routine where i get up at three in the morning and i sleep on a hard bed and i cold shower and i do he do one of those like videos I watch where those he videos gets all in like the, time. the ice tub in the middle of the snow every morning you know like yeah i watch that type of video i'm i'm subscribed to loads you would of those be subscribed to the grandma lama ding dong channel i'm like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna do all of this i'm already been single for eight years so i'm i'm way ahead of you on some of these things it's great and if you want to be way ahead dear viewer <laughs> this doesn't make sense, but I've started, so I'll finish in the style of Magnus Magnuson. Some of you will get that, some of you won't. And regardless, let us know in the comments if you did or not, because it helps the algorithms. Yeah. Put a comment down below. It helps. Do you like it? Do you want us to look into a topic of your choosing? If you put it in the comments and I'm already researching it, then you'll think I did that. The best way to help other than bingling the dingle and dingling the dongle and subscribing and all that type of stuff is tell someone about the show who you think might enjoy you know someone who likes history some weird facts a bit of a mystery maybe a monster sometimes and that type of thing we'd love you to just share the show with someone because that's the best way to grow a youtube channel really because we can't rely on the internet so thank you so much and paula thank you so much for doing the research on this one it's been weird but i've enjoyed it yeah thank you for going with me on this literal rabbit hole maze labyrinth of nonsense (laughs) i'm really glad you veered off at the cholera pandemic though because that was (laughs) i'll tell you now that was chilling my vibe thank you so much everyone for watching and we'll see you next time bye bye everyone